Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Today you join me, I'm back at base. And I had an idea for something and I decided that I'd actually give it a go. And it all stemmed from a recent trip that I had when I was down in Dingle shooting some wild waves. And it was actually on this day when I was shooting this shot. And when I got home, you know, I was excited to edit the image and I'm generally excited to get home and edit my images. The thing is, I've taken thousands of frames over the years and I've edited every single one of those shots myself. And while I do think my ability to edit a shot has improved over the years, I've often wondered in regards to my editing, could the same be true? Now, over time, we all develop our own style and we all develop our own bias. And that bias from editing creates the style that we prefer when we edit our images. And it got me thinking. When I was editing these shots, I was thinking to myself, how would somebody else edit these shots? Now, because I was there and because I was able to experience being there, I knew what the conditions were like and I had a kind of an idea how I wanted to edit the image even before I got it home to edit. But it got me thinking, if somebody wasn't there and they were to pick up my image, how would they edit that image? Would their style and their bias come through? So, my idea was to reach out some, some very, very talented photographers, some of the best in the world at the moment, actually, in the landscape field. And to my surprise, they actually said yes. Now, what I did was I sent the raw file to this image. No real instructions, just edit it how you see fit. You can crop it, you can do whatever you want to the image. Just send me back the raw file. Some of the guys were actually very nice to actually record how they edited the image for me, which is really, really good because it gives me an insight into how they edit. The others did an edit and sent it back to me and I was very, very surprised to see that I could see their style actually coming out in the edited image of this as well. So I think it was a very, very interesting experiment and one that has really opened my eyes because the one frame or the one raw file has given five completely different edits to my own. So. Let's go and I'll show you some of these edits from these fantastic photographers and I'll talk you through some of the thoughts as well on some of the images also. Hi Darren, so I've edited your photo and let's just jump in and see about where I have ended up with it. So this here is the after photo and here we have the before photo. And the one thing that stood out to me is I'm pretty sure that what you want to show with this photo is of course the water and there's a lot of texture in it and then you have this water explosion here in the background and that is like your main subject. And what especially I saw to begin with is that obviously the water is the bright part of the photo, it's the high contrast area of the photo, but we also have kind of a bright vignette all the way around here. So what I started out by doing was simply just to reintroduce some vignette. And I did that all the way down here. So I just reintroduced the vignette, the natural vignette from the lens. And then I added a little more as an effect down here in the effects panel. And all the way up here at the basic adjustments, I brought down the highlights to bring out more information there and I brought up the shadows as we usually do and then I added some contrast and a little bit of exposure as it was a little bit underexposed probably to expose for the highlights and what I've done also is I have put in a lot of local adjustments so I wanted to pull out a bit more of the details in the water so I use some clarity as you can see in this one here down here I've even dehasted even more as to really bring out some details in that little water explosion there and even more details in this one. Then I have used a gradient filter to darken down the sky and bring out some texture. I really love that sky. It's super cool. So I really wanted to also bring out that mood of the sky, but I don't want to like, you know, completely overdo it and just bring it down like this as you sometimes see. I wanted it to be still fairly natural to what you would actually see if you were on location. And I've used a ton of radial filters because when 
this side of the photo is as bright as it was, even though I've brought uh, the vignette down, I still think that my attention was really brought out to the sides here. And there's a lot of contrast out there because we can see the individual waves kind of come more forward and we have the reflection from the clouds up here that brightens up this part of the ocean and it's kind of the same thing in the other side here. So I've used a couple of radial filters where I've brought down the exposure, brought down the contrast quite a lot and brought down the whites and removed some of that uh, local contrast by bringing down the clarity and I've done that in both sides. So again, you can see before and after, you can see what I mean by how much our attention is kind of brought out to the side relative to in here. So if we toggle it on again and yeah, so I have also over here in the corner uh, brought down the highlights and the exposure and especially on this stone here as we can see from the before you have this highlight down here and again it's also red so it stands out to the colors the rest of the colors in the scene so i brought down the saturation quite a lot and i brought down the exposure quite a lot so our attention is not drawn down there in the corner and you can see how much that helps like you basically wouldn't see it unless uh, you knew it and that's about it. A few more small adjustments in here. I've tried to bring out some of the clarity in the, uh, in the waves just for them to stand out a little bit more than they, uh, than they were before. So all in all, I have really tried to just bring all the attention into the photo and into the wave and bring out a little bit more texture in the clouds. So yeah, I'm curious to see what the other guys, uh, how the other guys have approached and edited this photo. Okay, Darren has sent me over this file here and like a fool, I volunteered to uh, edit it. But now that I'm looking at the raw file, I, I wish I hadn't volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> just just kidding Darren um, right uh, let's have a look here first thing I'm gonna do is go to lens corrections and it's already set automatically to deal with any kind of anomalies that happen with that lens and that camera and of course being a Canon um, you know there should be lots of weird things happening in there um, the first thing that strikes me, uh, I really love the the water movement. Um, so that would be something that I would emphasize. The foreground is quite dark. I'm guessing that um, Darren exposed for the highlights. So I'm just going to bring up the whites and I'm holding down the option key. This is on a Mac so that I can see how far I can go with those whites before they're overexposed. So let's try that. Now this is quite a contrasty scene. Um, I'm going to bring up the shadows and bring up the blacks. So we're pretty much just flattening out the image. Now the one thing that I'm, I'm not keen on is the light on this rock over here. And I say I'm not keen on it uh, because it kind of draws your eye out. So what I might end up doing is cropping this. Maybe something like that for now. The reason why I'm cropping it is because I want to eliminate this dark area here. Okay, now the clouds are quite bright at the top, which is usually the case, and dark in the middle here. So what I'm going to do here is grab the graduation tool and I think I'm just going to darken the top just a little bit. Now I'm going to go into the circular tool here. I'm going to bring that into the middle here. Uh, invert it. And I'm just going to bring up the whites in the central portion here. A little bit of clarity. Something like that. I'm just going to go up to 
we grad filter again and darken the top just a, ever so slightly a little bit more something like that right next bit a circular tool again um, I'm going to invert this and I want to add texture in the um, emphasize the texture so uh, let's just bring the whites down what I'm going to do here let's um, go to the range mask luminance show luminance mask and we just want to affect more or less the highlights so I'm bringing the shadows up so they're not affected as much something like that and I'm just going to zoom in here or fit to fit and just adjust the clarity a little bit so it's all it's doing is affecting the, the water more or less just going to paint in uh, or mask this section here and this section over here and I'm just going to darken that just a little bit by darkening it I'm just bringing or trying to bring more attention to this this uh, textured water here let's go for an, another new one a new paint brush and show selected mask overlay and I just want to brighten up or try to attempt to brighten up this rock here all right and it's going to open this up in Photoshop to do a few more adjustments right I've opened uh, up the image in Photoshop and I've uh, put together a, a dodge layer so we have a white paintbrush and uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of dodging in the uh, in the central portion here so B for brush and we're going to adjust it so that it's feathered Hardness is at zero and the flow is, let's go for 4%. And I'm just going to give this a few sweeps here. Like so. And then on the TK panel here, I also have burn button here. Same thing, except now we have black. And I'm just going to burn the top just a little bit. And we're going to go for another dodge layer and I'm just going to dodge some of the darker areas so what I'm going to do in this case is I have another panel here called Lumenzia and this gives me um, some options for some really I just use the basic luminosity masks uh, you can get quite a bit more involved with this so D the D section here is all the dark the masks mid sections as uh, mid tones and then lights so we just go through these really quickly so basically what this is doing is making a mask so that we have uh, just trying to try to remember that black conceals and white reveals so if I pick this mask and do any dodging and burning it'll only affect the areas that are the brightest so if I run my brush over, say, the rocks, then that would brighten them. But if I run it over the water area, which is in black, then uh, it wouldn't affect them. And uh, the opposite to that would be the lights mask. So if I pick lights, you can see that now we have the rocks are, are darker and the water is brighter. So now if I dodged, it only affect the water. Now, since the, the rocks are very dark, I went for a darks two, uh, darks three. Um, let's go for a darks three. So we pick dark three and 
um, you just pick select and that'll make a mask and we've got it applied to this dodge layer up in here so what I'm going to do is just start painting this so that we're actually brightening up the, uh, the rocks here without affecting the water too too much now you probably think well there's not really much happening but if I go up to this uh, dodge layer here and click on the eye here you can see that it's affecting it quite a bit and if you want to go a little bit faster we can go up to five percent and we can just start dodging those areas there as I said if I go over the water it will not affect the water in any way just the dark areas so if I wanted to brighten up these middle rocks here just a little bit and up here and we click on the eye again you can see that it's just brightened those areas it's very handy um, we could try a different mask. Uh, Command D uh, deselects the current mask. DM1. You can see now that this more or less just affects this mask is for uh, mid tones more. Um, LM1, you can see, is mid tones again. M3 is definitely mid tones. five that's the darkest of dark areas and so on um, to kind of play around with these let's go with just the D here uh, select and we're going to get a fresh dodge layer so we'll dodge this just a little bit more oh that might be too much remember you can always overdo the processing um, so I try to not overdo it uh, you want it to look natural um, so if this area say looks too bright which i think it does you can just change the paint color we could change it to black and we could just paint that back in like that and see now that bright spot is gone we're almost done here um okay command d deselect that area I'm just going to burn this area. I would clone this out, but uh, I'm just going to burn this in a little bit more. So we'll go to our burn, black paint, 5%. And we're just going to burn this section in just a little bit more. Oops, that's too much. Let's bring that down to three. The idea is to draw the viewer's attention to certain areas. So generally speaking, if you have a bright area in the frame, then that's going to draw your viewer's attention. So if you have bright areas on the edge of the frame, then uh, they will draw the attention like this here. I find distracting, but there's not an awful lot I can do um, other than clone it out. Now I could brighten up this section here so we we'll zoom in on that. And we could zoom in on this section and we could brighten that a little bit. And let's pick uh, Lumenzia lights. Something like that, select. 
and we're just going to brighten this just a bit. Like I said, we don't want to brighten the whites too much, otherwise um, they'll be blown out. I think that'll do. There we go. Um, let's just go up to the adjustments here. Oops. Command deselect. We want to get rid of that. We don't want that in there. Okay, so if you want to adjust the blacks, you push down option. Get those blacks nice and dark. And then the highlights. And then the mid-tones I'll bring down to that'll do. Let's just zoom in. And there we go. Uh, the reason why I have it on a white background rather than black is if you're printing it, uh, images tend to look uh, darker on a white background and brighter on a black background. And since you're printing on white paper generally, then uh, it gives a better representation of what it will look like on white paper. All right, there we go. Okay, so next up is the king of mood, Mr. Nick Page. And I was really delighted when Nick said that he would actually take a go at editing the image because I love Nick's ability to turn an image into something incredible. And I was really hopeful he was able to do something with my own RAW file. And exactly that is what happened. You can see that Nick has really added his own style to this image, taking it really, really dark and adding a lot, a lot of drama into the image. Now, when I took the photograph, Adam was right when he explained that I exposed for the highlights and I quite directly did, but I wasn't really happy with the detail that had come out in the waves but Nick has managed to bring that out absolutely perfectly in my opinion. Now what he's also done is really brought out that detail in the sky. And the sky itself was fantastic on the day. I remember even making the video and commenting that there was such drama in the sky and Nick has managed to do that as well perfectly. Nick also did a crop, but he went for a square crop and really, really focused in on the central star, which is that breaking wave crashing on the rock right in the center of the image. And I'm really, really intrigued in how he actually managed to get this shot together. Now, unfortunately, he didn't have the time to be able to record a video to go through it for me. But if you've watched any of his tutorials, you'll see he has a number of tips, tricks and secrets that he would use in his editing process. And it's clear in these images that he used quite a lot of them. So I'm really, really excited to see this image. I hope you like it too. Let me know in the comments what you think of the image. And now we move on to the next. Next up is the incredibly talented Mark Denny. And Mark is actually a guest with me on the podcast a number of episodes ago. And I remember at the time looking at his images and his portfolio. And I was really, really impressed with how much detail he had in his shots, but also the color palette. Now, this was actually taken not far away from sunset. And whilst there was color in the sky, Mark has actually managed to bring that out in the image. And what intrigues me about this is all of the others didn't take this color from the sky, but Mark has, and you can see that this orange glow was there. And it actually was there, but I myself also couldn't take that out of the image. When Mark was editing the image as well, I imagine what he decided to do was to really, really focus in on bringing that color palette to life. And you can really see that he has done that. Unlike the others also, when you look on the left-hand side of the image, that bright part of the image is actually a color that's matching and the color of the water as well really, really complements the entire scene. Now, I also would have liked to see what Mark would have done with this, but unfortunately, he was traveling to a workshop in Iceland, so I was delighted that he took the time to actually edit the image for me, and I really also like the quality of what has come out from this. This is the most colorful image that I've gotten 
out of all five, and I think it's a fantastic shot on its own. I'm delighted that it's my own RAW, and I'm delighted that Mark has actually managed to take the time, like I say, to do that edit on the image. So also, what do you think of the image? Let me know in the comments below. Last up is Adrian Modi from Night Lights Films. Adrian is an incredibly talented photographer and videographer and filmmaker. And Adrian is French. He lives in the Arctic Circle and he specializes in night photography. The Aurora is something that he understands implicitly. And I was really interested to see how he would edit this shot, considering the majority of his images he will do at night. Now, Adrian has taken a completely different approach as well to this shot. You can see what he has done is brightened up the rocks on the left hand side. The detail is there in the waves and also the sky. Now the sky itself is not as dramatic as you see in the other photographs and he has a really, really subtle edit to this shot, which I actually really like. It reminded me of my own image, and my own edit of the same shot. And I do think that it has turned out exceptionally well. Now I was intrigued, like I said, to see how he would approach this shot. And I'm also hopeful that I will be able to see at some point what he actually did to edit this shot because it is really, really nice. It came up close enough to my own and I wanted to see his approach, would it differ from the others? And I think it actually has. So like the others as well, let me know in the comments below what you think of this edit. So we've reached the end of this absolutely fascinating experiment. I hope you've enjoyed as well coming along in the journey and learning how these greats actually edit the same shot. It's been really eye-opening for me to be able to see the different styles that can really come true. You can see the real dark and moody shot that comes from Nick's edit, the light and airy shot from Adam. Maz's style is really, really interesting and I was really fascinated to see how much work he put into the same image. Mark's image, like I said, is full of color, full of impact, and it really, really does show the beauty that you can get from the one raw file. And Adrian, I was intrigued to see how he would deal with a shot, considering he shoots mainly nighttime photography. I leave you now with my own shot at the very, very end of this. I hope you've enjoyed coming along on this journey, and I hope you've learned a lot from watching the guys in their style. If it's your first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, Slonga Fall.